A portrait of the artist as a young man is James Joyce's first novel, first serialized in the literary magazine The Egoist in 1914 and 1915, and then published as a book in 1916. It tells the story of Stephen Dedalus, a boy growing up in Ireland at the end of the 19th century. He slowly but surely lets go of the social and religious chains and decides to strive for a life dedicated to the art of writing. Stephen Dedalus is Joyce's alter ego, whose last name references Dedalus, the ultimate craftsman of Greek mythology. The Catholic faith and Irish nationality heavily influence young Stephen. His father is terrible with money, and as a result, the family has to move regularly always to a worse house, as their finances get more bleak. He and his nine siblings are tutored by the governess Dante, a devout Catholic woman, and his uncle, called Charles, also lives with them. When he's sent to attend a boarding school called Clongo's Wood College, he feels lonely and homesick, as he doesn't fit in. He's bullied and even gets pushed into a cesspool, which makes him sick, but he doesn't tell on the boy who did it. At a Christmas dinner, there's a big argument over politics after the death of an Irish political leader called Charles Stuart Parnell. After the summer, he's told he cannot return to Clongo's because of financial problems. The family moves to Blackrock, where he goes on walks with his uncle Charles, and he imagines going on adventures with some of the boys in the neighbourhood. His father is able to send him into a private school by using a little charm. He's sent to Belvedere School, where he starts to excel as a writer and actor in the student theatre. He meets a girl called Emma Clare there too, who becomes more of a muse than a genuine person in his mind. She'll stay his object of adoration throughout his adolescence. His first sexual experience with a prostitute in Dublin plunges him into a feeling of guilt and shame as he tries to make it fit with his strict Catholic upbringing. His sex obsession grows, however, and his fantasies become more and more adventurous and obscene, and he starts going to a prostitute more regularly. Whenever he reflects on his behavior, he senses he doesn't even want to stop anymore, not caring to change. When the school organizes an annual spiritual retreat, Stephen hears three sermons on sin, judgment, and hell, and shaken by this experience, he suddenly feels sorry for his recent behavior and decides to become a devout Christian, going to Mass every day. This newfound devotion is so intense that the director of his school inquires if he would consider entering into the priesthood. He does consider this for a while but concludes that the strictness of this lifestyle clashes with his love for sensual beauty. His sister tells him that the family will be moving again due to financial reasons, as Stephen awaits news about his acceptance to a university. When he strolls on the beach one day, he sees a girl and, in an instant, realizes that love and desire for beauty shouldn't be something to be ashamed about. He determines that he will live life fully and not be kept back by the chains that his family, nation, and religion impose on him. When we meet Stephen, he's attending university. It's given him a new sense and structure in his life. He has also been exposed to the ideas of Thomas of Aquinas and Aristotle on the topic of beauty and has gradually developed his own philosophy on it. He has plenty of friends, but he wishes to create an existence in all freedom. He knows he can only do this abroad, away from his nation and all he's known so far. Stephen equates his departure similar to the flight of Daedalus, who ingeniously created his own wings and used these to escape from his prison. He leaves Ireland with the purpose of becoming a writer. If you have suggestions of which books I should summarize, please let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.